Uh, good morning everybody, welcome to the Saturday preview on a Friday morning here live from your race course. Um, I've come down the way a little bit because it's a bit too sort of busy out there, it's, it's quite noisy and it might be noisier if this PA system starts up, but I found I've come down to the stands by the furlong pole where it's a bit more shady than uh, you know, it's not too bad down here. Hopefully, um, we'll be able to get through the preview in one piece without too much interruption. We'll see how we go. Um, sun's out now at York. It's going to be uh, quick by this time tomorrow, I think. I might be putting some water on it tonight, but um, the forecast is certainly going to get warmer in the morning. So, uh, good to firm. It's going to be definitely by by tomorrow morning. Well, I'll say call it good to firm, but it'll be in near a firm, I'm sure. Um, Strenshaw, first race at 150. Not got a lot of interest in it as a, a betting heat for me i think i just prefer zaki over wissahick and um i don't think there's much between them and the betting suggests there's not um i think wissahick might need a, a better end-to-end -end gallop which you might not get only only forest rangers probably likely to lead these um i think zaki's got better speed so i thought um, i thought zaki would be uh, the one i was quite impressed with him at, at epsom this nine field on trip might be ideal um, Melrose at 2.25, this is a bit more like it, it weren't too many, I liked here and I thought Armenia, uh, Michael Stouts, he's been, he, he is a horse that's been crying out for a crack at the staying trip and when you look at his pedigree that sort of backs that up as well, every time he's been going over 10 furlong, 10 furlong was way too short for him at Goodwood last time, 12 furlong the time before, wherever he's getting going too late but he's really hitting the line running every time he finishes off. Um, really does want, I think, 14 furlongs. I think you'll see this whole step up tomorrow. Handles quick ground, he won't have a problem with that. I think he's got a, a very, very solid chance. Um, Land of Oz would be the backup. Um, he's, not many of these have proven over this trip, over a mile six. He is one that is. Wasn't visually impressive at Sal Salisbury last time, made hard work of it. Um, possible the ground was a bit on the soft side for him there. And But it was it, it was a decent speed figure anyway. The speed figure, sort of, sort of, it was a better performance than it actually looked on the eye. So. Um, it's still improving. I know this is a bit harder. It won't, it won't be failing through a lack of stamina, though. So, uh, we've now seen that actually just down the end here we have some sort of running race going on. Fantastic. So we're going to get a bit of commentary on that as well. Um, City of York at 3 o'clock. Um, hard one. Um, again, there were sort of two that sort of made some appeal. Uh, Kate Byron being the first one, I just think he's out of his depth in the July Cup last time, which uh, wasn't that big a surprise, I suppose, really. I mean, before that, it was only sort of handicap and group three form. This group two might be a bit more, he's saying it, it's, it's certainly a bit easier. Um, and this seven foot on trip, he's going to ask a lot of questions. There's a question marks over a lot of these over the seven foot on trip. He's, he's not got a problem over it, and he's impervious to the ground, so it wouldn't surprise me if he bounced back. And the other one I liked in the race was Shine So Bright. See what price they put Shine So Bright in, because I think, I thought he ran really well in the 2000 games, actually. He ran a, a good race there. Um, the form of his, um, the form of his free handicap win, time before that's worked out okay. That's yeah, worked out well enough. And given he's won after a break before, the fact that he's not been seen since that 2000 games run in April is really a negative. I think he's got more going for him than most of He might have a bit more improvement in the locker as well. So I'd be interested to see what price they put Shine So Bright in, and that's for Jib York. He's, Definitely very interesting. Okay. Um, the e bore itself, 340. What a what a tough race this is. I mean, when when you first sort of look at it, you think, you know, well, have they raised the e bore to two miles this year? There's a lot of there's a lot of two milers in here, and on what's going to be pretty quick ground tomorrow. I sort of get the angle that you might need you might need a two miler for a, you know a mile six race that's going to be run at a really solid pace. It goes back to that sort of Cheltenham. It goes back to that sort of Cheltenham thing of. You know, two mile handicaps you look for a two mile two, two mile four horse, and two and a half milers you look for two and a half mile handicaps you look for three milers. My, I get that there's a degree of that in the e ball tomorrow, but a lot of these, you know, they are proper two mile plus horses. Um, as such, I find it a hard one to read, and one of the horses I ended up going with, you, well, you'll see in a minute, I just thought I can't really go with that, but he does make some appeal. The, the first one's Mekong, who I think he's not really clicked yet, Mekong, um, but if you take his York blowout away when he was last to seven here, um, a couple of starts back. I, I just forget that. That wasn't his, his, his true running. Then his form this year actually reads all right. Um, he'd been going from the front, but hold-up tactics produced a better effort at Sandown last time. And he might have bumped into a group, might have bumped into a group horse there. When he was fourth to Ghost Watch here last year, that was a really, really competitive race. He was made favourite for that day. Made favourite that day. 
this may be the day that Mekong steps up, but again, price is going to be everything. The other one I ended up going with, and I, I sort of ended up shaking my head a little bit, but you can't deny the claims of Red Galileo. I know he's eight, and I know he's fully exposed, and I know we don't win many races. That's Those are the negatives. Let's get them out of the way. But since he's been given a hood on his last two starts, he has looked a reformed character. He's looked a lot better. His form's taken a step forward. Um, he was a good winner at Newmarket. And the way that he finished off there, he was, you know, off the bridle half a mile out. And he was hoping to be pushed along, but he hit the line running. Um, and then he was far from disgrace in the, in the Northumberland plate under a big weight. Um, I like him. Got young Kieran Fallon taking another five off his back. With the extra place, I don't think he can win. But equally, bookmakers know that he probably can't win. And you're going to get a big price about him here each way with, with extra places. And I think that's where it sort of makes a bit more appeal. I can certainly see him finishing in the first five, six. If, you know, if, if he, even if he can't win it, maybe, maybe he can. I mean, he's a classy sort. And mile six on this ground should be ideal for him, which you can't really see for too many of them. So, you know, Rod Galileo is he's a weird one. He shouldn't really be one that I'm looking at. But I, I, I really am. And as I say... The price is right in the morning. I'll, I'll definitely be having a definitely be having a bet. Uh, four ten, the Julia Graves. Not mad keen on the race, to be honest with you. A lot of unexposed horses, and I think the pace might collapse as well. There'll be a lot of front runners. If the pace collapses, Streamline, who's unbeaten in a couple of Clive Cox now, might be the one. What he's done so far, that form needs improving on. But he did come away at Kempton on hands and heels, and he was. He was quite impressive. The faster they go, the better for him. He can be a hard pull. He wears a hood, and he's, he's quite interesting at a price as well. Um, do not know what's going on there. I've got no idea. It looks absolutely horrendous, whatever it is. Um, the mile two handicap. I'm tempted to give Johnny Drama one more go. It was, it was, sort of, it was done for after 100 yards at Goodwood. I thought he'd lead that day. I thought it was a real good sort of pace angle from the front. Missed the break, slow away, game over. And yet, and yet, despite that, he still ran well in defeat. He was, he was a close six, um, running, on, running on quite well at the finish. Um, he was an easy winner at the trip tomorrow for his previous yard. And there ain't a lot of pace on here again tomorrow. If they can get him out on level terms, if they can get him out. He, thanks for that. If they can get him out on level terms, I think he's got a bit of a squeak tomorrow. And he's got the, he's got the only pace to negate what is a poor draw. So I think he's got a chance. Um, Rise all is the other blindingly one. Improving four-year-old, you'd be... He's hard to kick. He's hard to kick out the frame. Uh, and then the five furlong, um, the five furlong handicap to finish off with the one that made the two that makes him appeal. K. Amoro, Michael Dodds, uh, hosed up over an extra half furlong here um, last time, but that race was sewn up at halfway. He had a more cup, and so the fact that it's five and a half, back to five for five and a half is of no consequence. The ten pound rise means that he's going to need a bit more, but he is well drawn. Phil Dennis in these apprentice races is worth plenty. Already winner, ridden a winner this week. I think if he can reproduce that, he's going to be pretty hard to beat. If you want one at a whopping price, and you can have a look at Little Legs of Brian Ellison, who is very, very risky. Um, uh, but there are some positives. He was a, he won over Catrick Sharp five in July. That York run afterwards, he's best forgiven because he stumbled that day. Quick turnaround after disappointing at Bath earlier in the week. But now they're going to give cheap pieces a try as well. Showed really good speed in the Julia Graves on this day last year um, and didn't get caught till late on. Came up this time as well, didn't get caught till late on. If the headgear works, that's the case. If, if the headgear works, thought little legs would have a bit of a squeak as well. But, say, tough race to finish off with. Okay, well, there we go. I've kept it as brief as I can, eight and a half minutes, and you've had the commentary for whatever they're doing as well in the background over there. Um, best bet of the day tomorrow. I do like the stout horse in the, the Melrose. Uh, Almunia, the name of which I've forgotten. I think it's Almunia. I thought that had a really good chance. Looking forward to that. Looking forward to that tackling the mile six tomorrow. Um, Almania, I should say. That's the one. Uh, looking forward to that tackling the mile six. I'll put my bets on the pun in the morning, as ever, when we know prices and we know how many places we're getting on these different things. Love to carry on from last Saturday. We had a really nice last Saturday. We had a good winner at Market Race. All the each way doubles and everything copped as well. That's it. We can carry that on, guys. Enjoy your weekends. See you on Tuesday.